I stood alone with the Duke on the lawn, beside his great house. Well, Billy, he said, I'm glad they're all happy, but what about you, my lad? I'm wondering if you happen to have just one extra special little wish, all for yourself. If you do, I'd love you to tell me about it. There was a sudden tingling in my toes. It felt as though something tremendous might be going to happen to me at any moment. Yes, I murmured nervously. I do have one extra special little wish. And what might that be, said the Duke in a kindly voice. There's an old wooden house near where I live, I said. It's called a grubber. And long ago it used to be a sweet shop. I have wished and wished that one day somebody might come along and make it into a marvelous new sweet shop all over again. Somebody, cried the Duke. What do you mean, somebody? You and I will do that. We'll do it together. We'll make it into the most wonderful sweet shop in the world. And you, my boy, will own it. Whenever the Duke got excited, his enormous moustaches started to bristle and jump about. Right now, they were jumping up and down so much, he looked as though he had a squirrel on his face. By gad, sir, he cried, waving his stick, I shall buy the place today. Then we'll get to work and have the whole thing ready in no time. You just wait and see what sort of a sweet shop we're going to make out of this grubber place of yours. It was amazing how quickly things began to happen after that. There was no problem about buying the house because... It was owned by the giraffe and the pelly and the monkey, and they insisted upon giving it to the duke for nothing. Then builders and carpenters moved in, rebuilt the whole of the inside so that once again it had three floors. On all these floors they put together rows and rows of tall shelves, and there were ladders to climb up to the highest shelves and baskets to carry what you bought. Then the sweets and chocks and toffees and fudges and nougats began pouring in to fill the shelves. They came by aeroplane from every country in the world. The most wild and wondrous things you could ever imagine. There were gum twizzlers and fizzwinkles from China. Froth blowers and spit sizzlers from Africa. Tummy ticklers and gobwinkles from the Fiji Islands and lip lickers and push nuggets from the land of the midnight sun. For two whole weeks, the flood of boxes and sacks continued to arrive. I could no longer keep track of all the countries they came from, but you can bet your life that as I unpacked each new batch, ba batch, I sampled it carefully. I can remember, especially the giant wing doodles from Australia. Everyone with a huge ripe red strawberry hidden inside its be chocolate crust and the electric fizz cocklers that made every hair on your head stand up straight on end as soon as you popped one into your mouth. And there were niche nobblers and gum glotters and blue bubblers and sherbet slippers and tongue breakers and as well as all this, there was a whole lot of splendid stuff from the great Wonka factory itself. For example, the famous Willy Wonka rainbow drops suck them and you can spit in seven different colors and his stick draw for talkative parents and his mint jujubes that will give the boy next door green teeth for a month. <laughs>